Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. The story begins with a young boy named Jack, who lived with his father. The boy loved hearing the story of the giants, which his mother used to tell him before she passed away. In this story, it is told, long ago, monks found magic beans, hoping they would grow a path to heaven. Unfortunately, when they climbed the stalk of the giant plant, they found something else between heaven and earth. It was Gantua, the home of fierce giants. The giants descended to earth, robbing and plundering humankind, but worse, they also developed a taste for human flesh. This same story is enjoyed by Isabel, a young princess from a kingdom. Her mother reads it to her and asks if she isn't afraid of the two-headed leader of the giants. The girl responds that she's not, so her mother continues. The monks returned to dark arts to find a way to subdue the giants. They fashioned a crown from their molten hearts. King Eric enslaved the giants with the crown and sent them back to Gantua, turning it into their prison. He cut the stalk and peace was restored to his land. Relics remain from that time, buried with the king, and the story became a legend. As Jack's father tucks him into bed, the boy asks if the giants will come back. His father reassures him, saying that if such a thing were to happen, the king's guardians, born of noble blood, would deal with them. To comfort him, he quickly tells Jack that giants aren't real. Isabel's mother tells the girl that King Eric, in some way, was real. She is descended from the king. When the girl mentions seeing his tomb in the catacombs, her mother realizes she has been wandering around the castle. However, she isn't upset because she wants her to know the world in case she becomes queen someday and has the power to make the world a better place. Ten years later, Jack's uncle sends him to town to sell a horse, telling him not to get distracted. Upon arriving in town, Jack, now an adult, tries to sell his horse and cart. However, he gets immediately distracted by the city's theater, forgetting his uncle's advice about staying focused. They're retelling the story of King Eric and the Giants. Jack notices a beautiful girl in the audience, and she catches him looking at her. Before the play ends, three men harass the girl, and Jack decides to intervene when they follow her outside. He's struck in the face and asks the men to let the girl go. Suddenly, a royal guardian appears behind him. The men apologize to the guardian, not wanting trouble, and when they see Princess Isabel mount one of the horses, they kneel, leaving Jack bewildered. He turns around, and the guardian tells him to kneel as well. Outside the theater, Jack realizes someone has stolen his cart. Meanwhile, Roderick, an important advisor to the king, and his lackey Wick discuss his upcoming marriage to the princess. They cross paths with a monk and let him pass. Once inside the room where the relics are stored, Roderick quickly checks to see if they're all in place. The magic beans have been stolen, but King Eric's crown is still there. He orders Wick to close the city gates and find the monk. The monk realizes they're after him when Jack shows up trying to sell his horse. He offers Jack 10 copper coins for the horse, and Jack would gladly accept it if the monk had the money with him. Because of this, the monk offers him the beans as collateral. However, Jack isn't impressed and tells him he could return these sacred relics to the abbey in exchange for the promised money. The monk advises him not to lose the beans or get them wet. While Jack is still considering the offer, the monk has already taken his horse and is leaving the city. Before he can escape, Wick sends his men after him. They chase and capture the monk. Later, Isabel returns to the castle, apologizing to Elmont, her guardian, for making his job difficult. Simultaneously, Jack's uncle scolds him for trading the horse for the beans. He tells Jack that he needs to grow up because he's 18. The king reprimands the princess at the same time for running away from the palace without her guardians because she is the future queen. She asks her father why he would ask her to marry someone twice her age, someone she doesn't love like Roderick. Isabel tells her father that she's not a fragile and helpless creature, and he says she's just like her mother. Jack's uncle is furious and throws the beans from the table, saying he will have to sell Jack's parents' remaining possessions. He pleads with him not to do this, but the man doesn't relent. Isabel pleads with her father to set her free to roam the kingdom, but he doesn't want to lose her as he lost her mother. Despite her arguments before the king, he gives his final word that she will marry Roderick and stay in the palace. Isabel leaves disappointed, but that night, she defies her father once more. Simultaneously, Wick and Roderick are interrogating the monk. 
He tells them they should have left the beans where they were buried because they were made with dark magic and the beans can't be controlled. However, the impatient Roderick kills him. Later, Jack is worried about his uncle outside in the storm. At the same time, the princess is lost when she sees the lights in Jack's house and follows them. While Jack prepares to go out and look for his uncle, the princess knocks on the door. He invites her in, and they talk while the ground beneath the house fills with water, nearing a magic bean. Jack and Isabel discuss books and adventures. He tells her that he got into a fight in the marketplace in her honor, both pretending they don't recognize each other. Jack asks her what she's running from, and she says she's just looking for an adventure. Jack kneels, making it clear he knows who she is. Isabel tells him to stand up and thanks him for defending her honor. The beans start sprouting under the house, but they are not aware of it yet. He gives her his favorite book about giants and tells her he hopes she finds what she's looking for. Suddenly, the house starts shaking and a giant stalk bursts through the floors, reaching up into the sky. Jack is thrown outside, and Isabel is trapped in the house. She's carried away by the growing beanstalk, and Jack jumps on it to help Isabel. The house continues to rise higher and higher when Jack finally makes it back inside and tries to enter. Isabel opens the door, nearly pushing him out. He grabs her hand but still falls from the beanstalk, taking her mother's bracelet with him. Jack manages to safely get back down to the base of the stalk but passes out. The next morning, the king wakes him and asks why he has his daughter's bracelet. Jack is recognized by Elmont from the marketplace and is allowed to explain what happened. After explaining, he offers to climb up with the king's men and help search for the princess. Ultimately, both he and Roderick will aid the guardians in finding and rescuing Isabel. Later, the men are climbing up the stock. Roderick is clearly plotting something. Jack asks Elmont what he thinks is up there, but the guardian doesn't believe in giants. He also tells Jack that he shouldn't be doing this to impress the princess because even if she doesn't marry Roderick, she could never marry a commoner like him. Craw, the other guardian, helps Jack get to the other side of the stalk, but unfortunately, he falls. They save him and continue climbing the enormous beanstalk, losing men along the way per Roderick's request and without Elmont's knowledge. Now only six of them remain. The next day, they wake up and realize they've reached the top of the beanstalk. Since the princess isn't at Jack's house, they enter a completely unknown place to them in search of her, which is extraordinarily above the clouds, the world of the giants. While the guardians begin their search, Roderick corners Jack and threatens him for the other magic beans. Jack hands over the bag to them and is warned not to say a word. However, before that, Jack manages to keep one of the beans and puts it in his locket. Elmont and Craw find a clue left by Isabel to find their way back. Craw and the others follow Isabel's trail, when suddenly Jack finds the book he gave her, telling the rest that she must have hidden there. They see some broken branches and Jack supposes something big pulled her out of her hiding place, and she might be in trouble. Elmont orders the men to split into two groups. He, Craw, and Jack come across some sheep and try to catch one, accidentally triggering a trap. Elmont starts to free them when he notices something approaching. Once they're free, they hide from what's coming, a giant. He swallows a whole sheep and then catches Craw's scent and finds him. Craw runs, but the giant catches up with him in a few leaps. While getting ready to meet Craw, Elmont rushes to him and stabs the giant, only to be knocked out. The giant seizes them and takes them away. Jack follows them. Meanwhile, the other group reaches a waterfall, and the guardian tells Roderick to sit and rest while he finds another way. But seeing an opportunity to get rid of the guardian loyal to the king, Roderick tricks him and pushes him off the cliff. That's when suddenly, a giant snatches Wick and devours him. Another giant appears and goes after Roderick. But he then remembers what he has in his bag and retrieves the crown, which glows in his hand as he holds it toward the giant. Meanwhile, Jack followed the giant carrying Elmont and Craw until he arrived at what seemed like a huge city. Simultaneously, Isabel is being held captive by a giant who questions her about how she got there, but she doesn't respond. When he asks about others who might come after her, she says she's alone. But the two-headed giant, General Fallon, knows that Isabel is a descendant of King Eric, sensing the scent of the blood running through her veins, the same blood that once enslaved and imprisoned them there forever, unable to see humans again. He then introduces her to his men, excitedly stating that humans have returned.
Suddenly, the other giant brings Elmont and Craw as well. The giant leader questions the two, and when Craw refuses to say anything, preferring to be devoured rather than help, he is eaten. Meanwhile, Jack follows the commotion in the giant city but has to hide from two giants before reaching it. The general threatens Elmont that he will also devour Isabel if he doesn't answer his questions and argues with another giant about the right to do so when suddenly Roderick appears using the crown. All the giants kneel before him, including the general. Elmont is relieved when he shows up, but Roderick simply takes the throne. To the surprise of both him and Isabel, Roderick orders the giants to fight for him as their king and dominate the earth as his army. He tells them to prepare for battle at dawn. General Fallon doesn't like this. Meanwhile, Jack finds the room with all the loot the giants have stolen. Then, he takes a look at the city and hears Isabel pleading for her life as she's taken away. She and Elmont are being prepared to be devoured. Jack arrives to save them as the giant cook searches for something. He can't get Isabel out, so he goes to Elmont and gives him a knife. The giant returns, nearly killing Elmont with a huge skewer, and then puts him in the oven. Before being cooked, Jack climbs up to rescue him, while he wriggles out of the dough. Suddenly, the giant takes Isabel out of the cage and prepares to cut her into pieces when Jack, thinking of something, climbs to where one of the kitchen knives is and, leaning on it, jumps, falling and driving it right into the giant's back. Elmont frees himself, and Isabel hides while Jack dangles from the giant's back. He slams him against the wall, effectively ending the giant's work. Elmont is impressed that Jack killed a giant, and Jack tells them that he knows a way out. Meanwhile, at the base of the stalk, the king asks one of his generals if they should cut down the beanstalk. The man says the stalk is a means of going up but also coming down. They speculate on what might come down from there. Back in Gantua, Roderick orders one of the giants to wait for the rest on the edge. Jack tends to Isabel's wound, while Elmont mourns his friend's death. She feels guilty for running away and causing all of this. Jack tells her that, on the other hand, if she hadn't done that, Roderick would have taken the kingdom without warning. He tells her they need to rescue her so that when she becomes queen, she can make the world a better place. Her bleeding stops, and Elmont asks where they should go. They follow the river to the edge, where they find the giant sleeping. Jack thinks they should wake him with the help of a beehive. The two men approach the sleeping giant and place the beehive on his helmet, then run back to hide. They wait for a moment, then the giant wakes up, stumbles, and falls off the cliff. Isabel and Jack hug, but Elmont disapproves. While they walk towards the edge, Elmont tells them he needs to stay behind and take care of Roderick. He tells Jack to bring the princess back home and appoints him as a guardian. Isabel says goodbye to him, and the two leave. At the base of the stalk, the giant from before with the beehive on his helmet falls. The king then, witnessing this incredible scene, orders his general to cut down the beanstalk for the sake of the kingdom, even though he's suffering for his daughter. The general, however, hesitates because the princess hasn't returned yet, so the king takes his sword and goes to cut down the beanstalk, asking for his daughter's forgiveness. When he sees the king's determination, the general orders his men to cut the stalk. Later, at night, Jack and Isabel are still descending the stalk and see their city in the distance. They kiss, and then, seeing several lights at the base of the stalk, wonder what they could be doing there, to which Isabel supposes they must be waiting for them to welcome them. Then, we see that the operation to cut down the beanstalk is in full swing. At dawn, in Gantua, Elmont waits for Roderick on the edge. He is awakened by the roar of the approaching giant army. Roderick arrives and goes to the edge when suddenly Elmont attacks him, and he drops the rest of the beans. The two men fall into the entrance cave and fight. Roderick asks the giants for help, and General Fallon tells his men to dig and assist him. Roderick and Elmont fight, but Roderick gains the upper hand when Elmont manages to grab his sword and wound him. However, Roderick nearly pushes him off the edge again when Elmont grabs his knife and stabs him. The giants open a hole in the rock but can't reach Roderick in time before he dies. What they can do is take his body and remove the crown. General Fallon places it as a ring and becomes the king of the giants. Back at the base of the stalk, the men manage to cut a part of it. As it starts to tremble and break, Isabel and Jack can feel it up above. The pure mass of the stalk then starts to fall on the men at its base. As they fall, Jack tells Isabel to hold on tight because it's all they can do at that moment. Elmont, seeing the giant plant going away, 
jumps on top of it before it completely collapses, and General Fallon watches him go and shouts in anger. Jack and Isabel cling to the stalk, and he uses one of the tendrils as a rope to swing away from the plant and avoid being crushed. The rest of the stalk that Elmont is on falls and gets closer to the city wall, and Elmont jumps into the water to save himself. Meanwhile, the king feels terrible because he thinks he has lost his daughter. But suddenly, to his complete joy, his general approaches and brings her back to him. Isabel talks about Roderick, and he says he's sorry for almost having her marry such a man. Jack leaves, and when Isabel asks where he is, the king goes after him. He rewards Jack for the loss of his home, saying that as a father, he can't reward him enough. Isabel leaves wearing armor, and as they say goodbye, he gives her the book to remember him by. Isabel then rides with her father back to the palace. At that moment, General Fallon finds the rest of the magic beans. He then throws them in the water, and they instantly sprout. With this, Fallon readies his men as the beans start growing on the edge of their land. The giants begin to climb and push the stalks down even before they're fully formed, and General Fallon jumps as well. Back on Earth, Jack finds his horse when he sees the giants descending. So he desperately rides to reach and inform the king about this terrible fact. Moments later, the giants arrive on land. Jack, still riding fast on his horse, yells for a monk to sound the alarm. Jack can already see the king's cavalry heading with Isabel, so he starts yelling loudly to warn about the giants. Initially, no one can understand what he's saying because he's still far away. But as they comprehend, they can already see the monstrosity fiercely emerging from among the trees, running quickly to catch up with them. Everyone then, in panic at the situation, rushes back to the city in an every-man-for-himself manner, with the giants catching up and killing some of the king's men who were further behind. General Fallon specifically goes after the king, but they are delayed by the first beanstalk that had fallen. Elmont, at this moment, prepares the army in the city from archers to boiling oil. The giants are right behind Jack while Elmont waits for them to reach the city to ignite the oil. The king enters, and they start to raise the drawbridge before Jack can enter through it. In a very tense moment, Jack narrowly manages to jump through the gate with his horse. General Fallon also jumps but gets caught on the bridge, with the fire burning the hot oil beneath him over the water. Then Elmont and his archers shoot many arrows at him, causing him to fall and burn in the oil. The other giants, seeing this, do nothing to help him and prepare to enter the city. However, Fallon survives underwater. Elmont meets up with Jack and Isabel. He tells the king that Roderick is dead, and the giants have the crown when suddenly the giants throw a bell into the city and then hook it onto the drawbridge. The king tells Isabel to go to her quarters and light a flare that serves as an alert to the other kingdoms, he tells Jack to take care of Isabella. Elmont and the rest manage to hold the drawbridge while Isabel guides Jack through a shortcut through the royal catacombs, passing by King Eric's tomb. They reach the royal chamber when they hear something under the ground. It's General Fallon, breaking through the floor, and they flee. The army continues trying to hold off the giants, but they continue to decimate their ranks. They hurl flaming trees into the city while the soldiers throw spears at the giants and finally make some progress in the fight. Still, the giants simply retaliate and destroy their weapons. Fallon can smell the princess as she and Jack hide under the king's cape. He finds them and they escape up a narrow staircase. Fallon breaks a wall to get to them and grabs Isabel, then also grabs Jack as he jumps to try to catch him. As the giant is about to swallow Jack, he takes out the last magic bean he had stored in his medallion and throws it into the monster's mouth. The bean instantly starts sprouting in its stomach and comes out, killing it and destroying the palace. As pieces of the giant fall around Jack and Isabel, his hand with the crown falls beside Jack. Meanwhile, the remaining giants manage to pull the drawbridge back, and the king's men close the gate with iron bars. They all prepare for the arrival of the giants, who break the gate without much difficulty. Suddenly, they see the beanstalk destroying the palace. The giants begin to feel something strange and drop their terrible weapons. They then kneel before the human army. Everyone is puzzled when Jack appears behind them wearing the crown and Isabel takes his hand, thus saving everyone from the certain massacre that would have occurred. Years later, Jack is reading the end of the story to his children, where the giants were forced to return to their land, and the princess married her peasant prince. The children ask about the crown, concerned that the giants might return, but he reassures them that it is in a safe place as Isabel joins them. 
Jack tells them the story of the giants again, while the reconstruction of the crown is seen, becoming what the imperial state crown is today. The crown is seen in the present as a guide tells some students about it. The safe place where it is kept is Westminster Abbey in London, and today they believe it's just a children's tale, with no idea of the danger that still exists.